thanks. My name is Yue. I'm going to talk about uh, my experience of formalizing criminal law using the Catala programming language. I worked on this project for four months, and I'm I come from a computer science background. Uh, let me paint the background of the technical background of this project. is It is criminal law, and criminal law has its own uh, complexities. It has its longitudes and, and latitudes. Um, on the one hand, the criminal law defines uh, many crimes, and on the other hand, it defines a set of a variety of penalties for each crime. So in this in this image on the left hand side of the slide, I use horizontal lines to represent uh, to denote the different kinds of crimes. For example, there are DUI offenses, there are theft, murder, there are drug offenses, etc. And I used the uh, I use the vertical lines to represent uh, possible possible penalties associated to each crime. Uh, they have intersections for, between the horizontal line and the vertical line. So a complete formalization of the criminal law should cover the entire landscape. It's all the intersections between all the horizontal and the vertical lines. Uh, but this is a very huge work to be done. So we should start from something small. So there are partial formalization of criminal law. Oh, by the way, by, by saying a formalization of criminal law, I'm, I mean using the Catala program language to, to paraphrase the law and to, to write a piece of program that accepts input and produces output that in compliance with the law. So partial in implementation can, we can follow either a horizontal line or a vertical line. For example, we can we can select a, a particular particular kind of crime, let's say murder, and we compute all possible legal consequences of, of murder. For example, the probation, fine, and and prison terms. Alternatively, uh, we can also follow a vertical line. For for example, we can focus in on parole, and so that the program give any kind of crime can compute uh, the pro rule related to this crime. And I tried this, these two approaches, but it was, they are not suitable as a starting point for formalizing the criminal law because it's, they are still too complicated. So finally, I settled with a, a minimal challenge, which is focusing on the DUI offenses and focusing on the fine, which is a one intersection one particular intersection between DUI offense and five. That is uh, the work I'm going to present. But before that, I'm, let me introduce some background on the Catala program language. Uh, Catala is a language for uh, annotating, annotating legal text, and the program is in general intersp interspersed with the, with the lines of the text. And it features uh, making making competing definitions. By competing definitions, I mean the same variable. The value of the same variable is defined uh, many times in many different places, and the definitions may be different. I we see this very small snippet of program on the left side of the screen. There is three equations. The first one is def x equals to one. And the first equation defines the variable x to be one. And the second equation defines, says that if, if, if another variable y is greater than zero, then x equals to two. And these two definitions are uh, independent. The first one says x is one absolutely, and the other two, the other one says, if if y is zero, then we, we know for sure x equals to two. And this, you, you, can, you can think of this equations one and two are two different two authorities making a claim of on the value of x and if we if we consider the situation in which uh, y equals to zero uh, then the first authority says to you that x shall be one the second authority says if y is greater than zero x shall be two but he does not mention what happens if if y equals to zero so in this situation when y equals to zero, the first authority gives you definition, and the second authority says that in this situation, x is not defined. So you are receiving a conflicting messages from 
from different authorities. This is a competing definition. And we can resolve this definition by an implicit rule in the Catalan program language. The, this, impl this, this implicit rule says, if one, if one, if one authority tells you they, this, val this variable has a value and the other says this variable is undefined, then you should uh, regard this value as being defined because it is, it is regarded as being eagerly seeking a value. And in this situation, when y equals to zero, the first equation is the, gives, you, gives you the final value. And if we consider a, a second scenario in which y equals to one, then again, the first equation tells you x equals to one and the second equation tells, tells you x equals to two. This is, this is again a conflict. And this conflict is resolved by a priority declaration. This is equation three. This, this equation is provided by the programmer saying that the priority of equation two is higher than the priority of equation one. So, this, so when y equals to one, uh, the equation two takes uh, dominance and is x, the two is taking as the final value of the variable x. So this is the basic idea of the Cutler program language. And making, making multiple declarations or definitions for the same variable and these definitions may be conflicting with each other, but the programmer provides uh, priority rules. And, and under any scenario, uh, the value of a variable shall be unique based on the definitions and the priority rules. This is the basic idea of the Catalan program language. And now we see how we're using this, this language to model, uh, model to write a calculator for calculating the phi for a DUI violation according to Florida statutes. We choose Florida statutes because uh, well, our legal partners happen to come from Florida, so we have the support from them. And this in this diagram, uh, in the in the boxes are are excerpts from the code, uh, excerpts from the code, and and the arrows are represent the exception relationship. If is there, if there is one if there if there is an arrow from one box to another, it says. Uh, the, the source of the arrow is the exception to the target of the arrow. And all of these boxes contain something similar. For example, they all define the, a variable named phi. For example, in the, in, in, at, in the first box, it says definition phi equals uh, DUI phi minimum is zero, maximum is zero. This is the default situation, which says we, the person shall not be fined. And then it has an ex five exceptions uh, related to the to the green box by five arrows. And these five exceptions are uh, mutually exclusive, saying that, uh, for example, let's say the, so the first yellow box, uh, definition fine under the condition, the person is a violation of subsection one and first conviction consequence equals uh, minimum fine five hundred dollars, maximum fine a thousand dollars. So the this the person is in violation of subsection one. The subsection subsection one says a uh, person is, is commits a felon uh, commits the offense of driving under the influence if he has a or she has a blood alcohol level or breath alcohol level of zero uh, dot zero eight or more, or his or his uh, normal faculties are are impaired, but. It's a distinction between first conviction, second conviction, uh, third conviction within 10 years of the second one, third conviction out with 10 years of the second one and fourth or subsequent subsequent convictions. So there are five different uh, exceptions and they are uh, mutually exclusive. And it's when one exception holds, it is impossible for the other four uh, to hold. And each of these five situations have, have their own uh, exception. For example, for the first, uh, for the first one, uh, which is the, the let's say the, 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 the red box and the, the first red box saying that the fine under the condition 
the person is in violation of subsection 4 and the first conviction. So the relationship between subsection 1 and subsection 4 is uh, the subsection, you have a violation of subsection 1 if your blood alcohol level is, is greater than uh, 0 0.08, but if you violate subsection 4, if, if, the, if that blood alcohol level is not only uh, above 0 0.08, but also above 0 0.15, so it's a more uh, it's an aggravating factor. And the Cutler language can capture this sort of uh, exception, uh, default exception reasoning. And in the lower right bottom of the of the slide, I use a small small tree structured diagram to capture the the essence of the logical structure of this 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 program. So at the very top, we have a default case, and it has five branches, uh, which are which represent uh, five different. Uh, mutually exclusive exceptions, and this this is the second tier of the tree, and the third tier of the tree. Um, these are the individual exceptions to to their different. It's a two levels of exceptions. Okay, we have now uh, introduced cut, the Cutler language. We have now seen uh, how Cutler is used to to model. Uh, the logical structure of the legal text. And let's see uh, some key findings in this in this experiment. And this uh, I use this table to capture all possible input and output to the to the program, to the formalization. And uh, we have we assume that uh, a blood alcohol level of 0 0.10, that means the aggravating factor does not apply. And we have this, this table has uh, in a, well, the first, the first row is, is about damage. There's no damage or damage to property or life injury to person, or there are serious injury deaths or deaths without, without aid. And the first column says there are the DUI, maybe the first DUI or second DUI or third. The fourth. So there are two dimensions to, to evaluate a DUI offense. And the green area of the of the tables are the places where there's no ambiguity. Uh, there's a clear priority defined by the statutes. And the green, uh, the, uh, the green area show, uh, represent those situations which are not explicitly. Um, is there, we see, for example, we take one, any, any one cell you'd like, this cell contains, all of these cells have the same format, saying that by 2A, the, 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 the fine, by section 2A defines what, and by section 3 defines what. And these are, these are conflicting, possibly conflicting results returned by the, by the calculation. And ideally, this, this, this result should be, this conflict should be resolved by uh, some priority and annotation. Or by the uh, implicit rule that if it is undefined, this it, sh it should take a value. But in the gray area, this this the two results cannot be uh, cannot be merged. Uh, for example, if we see, I, I use the dashed red red borders uh, to 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 highlight some of the confusing cases. Uh, for example, if we take the second DUI, if this is your second DUI and you you damage some property, and by 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 the clause two way you have uh, for a second DUI you are you should have a fine of a thousand to two thousand dollars, and by by section subsection three, if you damage to property, you sh this is a mis first degree misdemeanor, uh, you should have a fine from one from zero uh, of maximum one thousand dollar fine. And th this makes me uh, rather confused because a, a second DUI technically uh, is a misdemeanor because its prison sentence, its is, is jail sentence is no more than one year, but it's fine. It's fine. It's from one thousand to to two thousand. Well, in Florida, the maximum fine for misdemeanor is one is one thousand. So, for for the second DUI, its its prison sentence, its its jail sentence is 
on the level of a misdemeanor, but it's fine. It's above the level of misdemeanor. This is one thing. And the second thing is, uh, second thing is how this person shall be shall be charged if 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 he damaged property and in in his second DUI, it will will he be charged? Shall shall he be charged with two crime uh, with with two crimes or just just one? And what makes it even more curious is if I if I committed if if I didn't if I didn't damage anything, I will be fined from one thousand to two thousand. But if I damage anything during my second DUI, it is possible that I will be charged with a misdemeanor and I, I will be fined less. So the more the more damage I cause, the the less fine, the less I'm fined. This looks strange. And a similar situation exists in when it's, it is a third DUI out with 10 years of the second one and is damaged to property or life injury. So I, I use, in summary, I, I use the Cutler program, uh, Cutler language to try to formalize the, the DUI law and the user shall provide some basic information and the, the, the program computes the, the fine. So the, the, the goal of the project is very simple. I, I gave the user provide some 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 pre primary preliminary information. For example, when is your DUI? Do you have any prior DUIs? And when is the date of your last DUI if applicable? And what is your blood level? So this kind of basic information and the program can just try to answer one question: What is the fine? And but but even this sort of seemingly straightforward task cannot be easily. Uh, easily programmed due to these uh, ambiguities or unspecified priorities. Uh, another question I have uh, when I doing this project is uh, there's some construction rules um, concerning whether, for example, can consider the, the I'm, second I'm sorry, UI. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're already very over time. Could you please wrap up in the next few minutes? Thank you. Uh, sure. Well, uh, in short, I'm just discovered some situations that I, I need some help from from legal experts to in order to resolve. And the output of the project is is uh, is a single sing, single simple calculator, as I described earlier. Uh, the user provides some some basic information like the date of the offense and the level blood alcohol level, and the calculator shall compute. Uh, the the fine associated with with this crime, oh, with, with this DUI offense. But there are some ambiguities I, not resolvable by a non-expert. This is the this is the talk. Thanks. Okay, thank you. We have time for maybe one or two quick questions. Hi, thank you for the talk. Always interesting to see the legal text uh, kind of as examples. Uh, did I co understand it correctly? Uh, you found that the exception structure was always a tree structure or, or in this case, uh, but but does it does that mean that we can expect that this will be the case in in all law texts? Uh, or so the exception structure is not always a tree structure. It can be a graph structure. It means one there's a one rule is an exception simultaneously to multiple other rules. And but uh, but the Cutler program language has a limitation on the structure of exceptions. Currently, it only supports uh, exception. One, one definition can only be an exception to one other definition. It cannot simultaneously be an exception to more than one definition. So this is a limitation of the of the language. But um, okay, thank you. Oh. So it sounds like no more questions.
Okay, then uh, I will cede my session chairing duties to final remarks. And also to thank the speaker, everyone. Yeah, thank you.